we have seven to eight minutes, so we can open the floor to any question to the panelists. Uh, you can go ahead, sir. Thank you, Dr. Tore. I would like to thank the panelists. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, I think that this session was really rich and the presentation was solid, but I wanted to comment on the point of the religious uh, discourse because uh, I can have a different perspective. Um, uh, since I started working in family planning, uh, I can see the conferences on family planning usually included um, a priest and, and, um, and a sheikh, and they all uh, talked about how the, uh, uh, that family planning is allowed uh, and it is not forbidden in uh, the, the, their faith. Um, and I would like to claim that uh, Egyptians uh, uh, use uh, faith selectively. I mean, if uh, the religious text uh, is consistent with my interest, then um, they rely on it. Then, but the religious institutions see must reinforce their own significance. Um, so. We should pay attention. We do not want to repeat the mistakes of the last 30 years because a Muslim or a Christian, they can lie, they can take bribes. When, when you come to family planning, they say, no, it's forbidden. What about the other things? So we do not want to fall in the same trap. Uh, and, and waste our previous efforts because I'm this should be addressed differently and here I would like to talk about the overpopulation beyond the direct awareness we should talk about uh, the, uh, the economic effect because um, People might oppose or agree, but the stakeholders are very important. Uh, I would like to also address the point of the lack of information because it is uh, one of the uh, major hindrances in our way. Dr. Heba, thank you for this session. It is really uh, rich. And I uh, only uh, paid attention to the last intervention about um, the demand. I worked uh, on the economic aspect of uh, overpopulation. Um, and it is uh, well known to everyone how it affects the economic uh, growth. Uh, maybe. We invest uh, in family planning. We can have 200 percent uh, return on investment. But um, if we uh, handle it as a commodity, then there is a market and there is a demand uh, and uh, and a supply. So we con we conducted uh, um, a study on the demand uh, a demand for the uh, contraceptives, but. Currently, we do not have a demand function because this demand function has uh, other repercussions and as such the function would be completely different. What are the other factors? There are some stimuli for demand, and these stimuli are completely different from uh, from uh, uh, advertisement. Um, there are different aspects that should be factored in, and as you said, uh, we sh we need uh, market research, um, and uh, we need. Uh, case studies uh, in two or three months. Uh, we can have a uh, real 
case studies. I'm not going to talk about uh, the supply. I'm talking about the demand here. We should investigate the um, factors that affect uh, the demand uh, in these places, and they might not be uh, religious at all. Uh, they may be uh, economic or based on individual preferences. So we should conduct quick and prompt case studies by a think tank that are specialized that can give policy briefs to the government or to whoever is responsible to have a quick reaction, quick response because as you said, uh, I mean, uh, demand is critical. I have uh, one single comment because I'm responsible for the Kefal and, uh, and Karamo uh, with the World Bank. Um, it is true that the Kefal and Karamo uh, covers two million households, but uh, the ministry put a condition that it's not going to provide for these families unless they have only uh, two kids. Um, there must be positive and negative um, uh, incentives. Uh, but the fact uh, that the program, the program conditioned the, all of the assistance on having two kids, I, I think it's positive. As Dr. Abla said, it's, only, it's not only the role of the Ministry of Education or the Health. Every uh, ministry should have a framework. Um, I mean, when you talk about uh, free education, you cannot provide free education to one family of 10 kids. Uh, you should have a look on the disincentives. Uh, one single family cannot receive uh, uh, free education for 10 kids while another family receives um, the uh, free education for only two kids. Uh, the role of legislations uh, and the programs of the different ministries uh, are, um, they should play this uh, role of a carrot and the stick. Um, One of the points uh, that were raised, uh, and I think it could be a solution as well, since I'm working with the UNFPA, generating uh, demand. Um, I mean, if we are thinking of what to prioritize in terms of awareness, we should think of the new users. Uh, uh, the newlyweds, when we have a, a nationwide a program for premarital education, we should be targeting the couples that are getting married soon. So if we have limited resources, we should focus on where to put our efforts. Um, we are also thinking of integrating a service. I mean, um, whether this service be maternal or uh, immunization for the kids, uh, counseling and referral services should be provided to women uh, um, uh, of a childbearing age. I think that uh, the presentation failed to include the programs that uh, are uh, currently in place. The Kefal and Karama, for example, it's not only the fact that they include two million households, uh, but we went to, to see how many families have two or three kids because they are prioritized to receive the counseling before they uh, go on and have a third or a fourth uh, kid. Um. Uh, also, there is the idea of changing the norms. Uh, we have concerning the norms, we have a problem. Uh, as uh, Dr. Fatma might comment on this, still uh, the, the, the will of, of, of the Yosa that to give birth to five or six children. So this is the norms. 
we have to, to change, to work on changing the norms and the culture. I think we are past our time. Uh, we'll take two more questions and then a comment from the panelists, please. Uh, Dr. Fatma, uh, we have 23 million families. Uh, do we have a classification for these families uh, concerning the numbers of, of children, if they have two or three or four children, as Dr. Khaled said? We have 2.8 uh, million needers, families that they need uh, family planning programs. Um, uh, were we able to classify this, this families? I would like to add something. Uh, we have the, the marriage cases in Egypt in the year 2017. We have thousand cases that they are ready to receive their first uh, kid, their first uh, child. We will see that in the year 2013, the marriage status, they were uh, 90,000 uh, cases and and, the, uh, and who are ready to receive their first uh, child from uh, 500 to 600. What we are expecting for the next year for those who are waiting for their first baby or for first child is uh, more than one million. Dr. Abla. No, you will be, you will be, you will be the last one. We are running out of time. I am Dr. Maha Mustafa. Normally, I will get to the point, but today, especially, I would like to thank the uh, Egyptian Center. Actually, I attend all the conferences, but this is considered, in my own point of view, one of the most important uh, uh, conferences because this is one of the uh, 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 biggest uh, problems that Egypt faced, and it has a huge impact. I arrived a little bit late, and for sure you talked about lots of, uh, of the impact of this uh, problem on the uh, transport transportation, on the resources, on the development, uh, 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 on, the, on the transportation, on the housing, on education, on health, on everything. This problem, if it is solved, is going to solve in a direct and an indirect way lots of other problems. There are two points that I would like to pass by very quickly. First of all, we are very happy with this kind of, uh, with, the, with the economic growth uh, that uh, we reach at 5.2. Actually, we need to be more than 9% in order to provide the needs of the population problem. A second point that I always notice uh, that the people uh, always say, no, this is a good thing. Look at China. Look what's happening in China. China, they are more than a million, and this is a wonderful thing. Actually, it is not wonderful at all. And actually, there are lots of people in China. They are poor. And uh, with all that huge productivity of China, if it is uh, divided on a less number, uh, for sure the income will be better. So it is not an advantage at all. You are talking a lot about awareness, uh, and uh, you were talking about the Kefal and Karama. I noticed that when I was a little bit younger, there was a thing that was done by Egypt, and I witnessed that it was very successful when Egypt focused on it, um, uh, which is uh, the Bilharisia, and it was uh, done by uh, an awareness program. So awareness play an important role when the government and when the state is focusing on a certain issue. For example, I uh, went uh, to the cinema and I saw uh, a commercial and advertising giving us uh, um, a message not to, to talk on the mobile while you are driving and not to text while you are driving. So it was a very good message. So if every cinema uh, will do the same and will have a kind of advertising talking about the uh, family planning in a very creative way, uh, for example, uh, showing how miserable the families are when they have lots of children, as the population in Egypt, 30% of it, they are less than 20 year, 29 years, so all of them, they go to the cinema, this is part of the communication strategies, this is considered to be one of the tools from a 
among many tools, but it is an easy and a fast one, and it is very effective. And it is a very effective way. And uh, the other important point, which is uh, the religious speeches in the mosques and the churches. And the last point that I would like to mention is the role of uh, the state uh, concerning the laws, uh, the laws against uh, the, uh, child, uh, the child labor and the early marriages. We should activate this law as soon as Possible. And I think the magic solution for all our problems is the education. But I think it's a long process. But I'm talking about the short-term solutions. Actually, the panelists, if I have a question here or a comment. G give me the opportunity. I will speak very quickly. You were talking about China. I would like to defend China. Yes, having this population is, is a problem, uh, but actually the economic policies in China decreased poverty. So there is an economic perspective. Uh, we have to focus on this. I'm very happy with all the comments because we are talking about the integrated and the comprehensive role that we need to do. And I will tell you that in the final session, we have an institutional frame the story is that it's, um, it's not uh, uh, unified. Uh, concerning Dr. Sahar, the setup of this conference is that we uh, present the study, what is the objective in order to get the updated information. If there is something that we misunderstand, it, we can correct it too. And actually, this uh, will, will, uh, is also applied on the donor uh, programs. Please tell us what you have. Tell us your information because we are not conducting a study. We are conducting a program in order to support the effort of the state and to solve this problem problem. We are going to submit um, this, uh, this uh, report to the President, to the Parliament. So I am addressing any department and every department that is working in the population sector. Please leave your business card in the reception or talk with the very serious researcher Ahmed Ged. Maybe Dr. Abla uh, to do a panel discussion for all the donors to have a platform in order to exchange information and to exchange a database. I'm going to conduct this and please don't say that you will be busy. Dr. Sahar, in one minute, please, a quick comment. I would like uh, Dr. Abla that she clarified the, the issue of, as I said before, about the sentence there was. I would like to thank her for giving such an opportunity after the uh, precious and the fruitful uh, the rich presentation to give me the opportunity to say what's new and what uh, is done, what is being done. Another thing is uh, the subject of the, the, the issue of the laws concerning the early marriage and the child labor and the leaking of education. I totally agree with you because you will never imagine in whenever I go, I say this, uh, this, this point before thinking of negative uh, uh, impacts because for the previous generation that they have, uh, uh, that uh, they didn't do anything. They are actually like victims. As we said, we have Takaful Wekarama, what's coming in the future. So let's look at the root causes for uh, such a uh, population for the early marriage and for sure we are going to talk about the education and the child labor. Early marriage, as you all know, actually the Zoon, the one responsible for writing the legal contract, marriage contract, the leakage of, of education, the penalty is 10 Egyptian pounds and it is not uh, activated. The child labor, uh, there is uh, a child law, so what we need is, uh, is uh, to have a, legisl a legislation council to amend this law, to read this law, to read it article by article and to see what's proper, what's suitable with the society, with the community and to activate it 
to monitor it and to follow up it, but to have laws and to have it in, in, the, uh, in the desks and they are not activated, I think that this is very important before thinking of the negative uh, incentives. Very quickly, what we need is we need to provide the society role models from small families and successful models, especially in the villages, and to be uh, honest and to be credible. Uh, don't choose, for example, a religious man giving a speech to the people living in a village talking about family planning, and he has nine children. Uh, it doesn't make sense that um, an entrepreneur will go and talk to the women in, in the houses and everybody knows that she has like 10 children. So we have to be credible, we have to be uh, uh, honest. Even those people working in the family planning uh, programs, we should be very selective. Uh, again, the 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 field uh, the field visits uh, to the uh, to the women that they uh, give birth to the children. We should pay uh, visits to them in order to offer the vaccines for for the children. In Iran, for example, uh, the condom is is used uh, 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 in a very uh, high percentage. Here in Egypt, the the men in Egypt, the percentage is zero using the condoms. Actually, the zero is the the number for men and everything, not only in the family planning, uh, raising children, everything. The man is zero. I would like to uh, thank uh, and to agree with uh, Mrs. Uh, Germain, also the DSL uh, 2015, when we calculated the age group from 15 to 24, we found that the percentage of of the uh, male and the female, their will to have children varied from 3.5 till 5 percent. So we need to work, we need to focus on the youth, especially those in the universities and faculties. Concerning uh, your question, uh, the 23 million families Actually, I don't know the classification of uh, the families, but for sure about the percentage is 13% that they don't have children. I was talking about Karama and Takaful, that it is an opportunity to cooperate with the other ministers and with the, with the uh, National Council and to adopt the same idea to knock the doors and to raise the awareness of having only two children to, to increase the number of messages that we would like to deliver together with the uh, different means of uh, social medias. We need lots of things, as Dr. Heba said, uh, all over the geographical sites because uh, there are different uh, uh, norms and different cultures between Upper and Lower Egypt, between the rural areas and the urban areas. I have a final comment. Maybe I am dreaming, but uh, by the advance of technology that we are facing, uh, big data, data mining, uh, the means now to reach uh, the consumers uh, to pers with personalized message is available. Now we have databases that they are generated. Takafulo Wakarama is a database. We can build on it. Uh, um, we have lots of database, we have uh, programs, lots of programs like uh, the, deb the governmental debit uh, card is going to be a database collected data and managing data when uh, we can imagine that, for example, if I would like to um, order something from Sook.com or Amazon uh, the following day, I will get a personalized message. So this is a kind of technology. So I think data con co collection in the uh, near future uh, with the availability of more information and database, I think that the messages might be more personalized and more targeting. So I think this is something that we start thinking thinking uh, of it and to start working on it. Uh, thank you very much for the attendees and I think Dr. Ablam, the, the, the panel is, the, the, the recommendation of the panel, I think uh, uh, they are going to be very beneficial.